Hello everyone. As promised, I'm going to show you how to uh, revert this router. This is the TP-Link TL-WR841N. Uh, this is the version 9 that I'm using. It may work on other versions or other uh, TP-Link routers the same way, but I can only comment on this one, the, the WR841N version 9. So, uh, you've installed DDWRT and uh, I'll show you what I have just like this on your router. This is like again a version 9 WR841N uh, TP Link router. Beautiful router. Uh, but uh, you've installed it now. You know, maybe you don't like it. Maybe there's something you need to stock firmware for that the DDWRT doesn't do. I have no idea what that would be, but uh, but you can't get it back. There's no web revert file for. Uh, the version 9 router and probably for good reason because it's pretty simple uh, to return back um, well I shouldn't say simple uh, it, it's actually uh, not simple if you don't know how to do it but this this video will I'll show you how to do it so first thing you need to do is go get some software from the internet number one you need to download the stock firmware of this router from uh, TP-Link so go to www.tplink-link Dot u sorry <laughs> www.tp-link.us us so then hit on the, on the support link and go to download and then scroll down until you see the WRN841N and it will warn you about the versions now we're using a version 9 so we're going to go to the hardware version uh, 9 here and if you scroll down, you'll see that there's one, two, three versions of this. I'm going to go with the earliest version. Uh, you can go with whatever one you wish, but I, I start with the earliest version. Once I revert it back to stock, then I just upgrade it to the uh, latest and greatest stock firmware. But I'm going with this one because I know it works. So uh, choose the 131129 here. And uh, okay, I got it under router. Uh, under my C drive, you put it wherever you'd like. Just remember, remember where you left it. Uh, so I'm going to go here, and uh, looks like I've already downloaded this. So I'm just going to go and do it anyway. What the heck? Save. You want to replace? It? Yes. Okay. So once you've downloaded it, if you didn't notice, it's a zip file, and I'll show you how to handle that. So let's go back. Let's go to our file browser down here. And I'm going to go to my C drive, of course, and down to WRN, I believe here. Yes. And then I put it in the stock folder. And um, I'm just going to delete this file here. There is the zip file. And the way to handle that, the easiest way, is just right click it and choose uh, Extract All. And there we go. Uh, if this is checked off, uncheck it. You don't really, it really doesn't matter. I go with that, with it this way. So extract. And you notice that it created this folder right above it. Uh, so let's open that file up. And there you go. There's the stock uh, 131129 uh, bin file for the uh, TP Link WR841 version 9. So you know you've got the correct file. Now you need to rename this file and I'll show you why. It just needs to be renamed. So here's the name that you have to give that file. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's scroll over. I'm just going to copy it and paste it in there. And I'm going to put this file into th this uh, file name into the uh, video description as well. Uh, but uh, you can see what it's called here. And so I'm just going to highlight that, right click it and choose rename. Uh, select it all and then I'm going to paste that file in there so paste and there it is WR841N version uh, I'm sorry V9 underscore TP underscore recovery dot bin all right so you need to rename that file to this file name in order to revert it back to stock and that's what we're going to do so there's step one so let's close this off now I understand you may not have access to the internet because there's something wrong with your router or whatever. Um, you know, 
fine. You can go to another computer or another uh, your buddy's house and download the software too. Put it on a USB key and come back to your computer and use it to restore your router. So next, we need to get a program called TFTPD. So just you know, uh, if you have a, I'm using Chrome here. If you're using whatever other browser, Google TFTPD. And you'll get TFTP32, an open source IPv6, blah, 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 ready program. Let's go to download. So you're going to go to the download file section. Then you're going to choose the TFTP D32 standard edition installer link right here. You're going to choose that one to download. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to put it in the same directory, my stock uh, WR841N stock directory. So hit save on that. All right, so you, we've downloaded it. We'll go to our folder where we downloaded it to, which was the WR for me. You go to wherever you downloaded it to. There we go. And stock. And there's the setup file, TFTP setup. So do double click that. Click yes. I got a. Uh, security saying do you want to do this I say yeah then I click on agree just choose all the defaults here so next install there we go and then hit close all right so now on your desktop you should have tftpd32 before we open this up we're going to do one more thing go down your network icon right click it choose open and network sharing center and then go to change adapter settings. And we're gonna disable any wireless uh, interface we have because you don't wanna do a flash through a wireless interface. Always connect with a hard wire, a network cable from your router to your computer. Um, let's see if I have a picture. Like this, this is the way I have it. I have it in port one, you should have it in port one. And basically uh, run the cable from the computer to the router on port one. Now this cable I'm using came with the router. You should have one too. Look in the box, you should find it. And it's an RJ45 patch cable. All right, so make sure you hook yourself up with a LAN cable to the router. Don't do this wirelessly. So I'm gonna minimize that. So we're gonna disable the wireless connection as we don't need access, access to the internet anymore. And then we're gonna go over here to the um, local area connection. And that's your LAN cable. That's where your cable, your, your interface for your cable that you're going to be connecting to your router is. So here we're going to go to properties. You notice it's not hooked in right now, but uh, you know we'll, we're going to plug it in here in a second. And then after properties, so let's, sorry, let me back up. Right click it, choose properties, go to internet uh, protocol, version four TCP IP properties. Again, right there, just double click it. And then we're going to use, click on use the following IP address. Then we're going to type in here 192.168.0.66. Now you have to put that number exactly. It has to be 66, okay? So then click on the subnet mask. It should auto populate that area for you. And then hit OK. And OK again. Uh, next, we go back to our router and uh, right here and I'm just gonna plug it in now it hasn't been plugged in but there we go and I'm assuming the router is in the off position right now and it is so next uh, what we're going to do is open up just to minimize actually you can just close this off I'm gonna minimize it because I'm coming back to it I need to turn the wireless back on after I successfully do all of this so Next, we go back to your TFTPD program. So double click it and it opens up. Then you're gonna to browse to where you saved that bin file that we renamed. So with me, it's C. Uh, where are we? Yes, right there. I don't know why it didn't go where I wanted it to go, but there we go. Stock and then into that TLD folder. So we'll hit okay. It's an annoying thing. Now, uh, just to check to see if you're in the right directory, just click on show directory 
and you should see the wr 841 nv9 underscore tp underscore recovery dot bin in there the one we basically the stock file that you rename to that name okay so that's perfect we're in the right basically you've, you've taken the tftp program and shown it where the right folder is with the right file next you're going to drop this down here the server interfaces and choose the ip address 192.168.0.66 and that is the network uh, IP address that you gave your network card. Okay, at this point, we're almost ready to flash this uh, router back to stock. And the way you do that is to go back to your router and hit your reset button, which is the reset button is the one closest to the yellow port. And hold it down and then turn the power on and keep holding it down after you've turned the power on for, for approximately three seconds. So just count one, two, three and you're there okay so I'm gonna do that next one two three and once that happens the router starts booting and you should see this happen it transfers the file from your TFTP um, program back to the router and at this point the router should be rebooting And in my router, I have the power light and the lock light on right at this moment. And I'm waiting for it to reboot. There you go. All the lights went flash. And then the router came, yeah, the router power light came back on. Now I'm getting some activity on the LAN cable and my Wi-Fi cable is now flashing. So it looks like the router is back up and running. So we'll double check this. Let's go to uh, the now default router IP address, which is not 192.168.0. Sorry, .1.1. When you go to stock, it's 192.168.0.1. So we'll click on enter on that. And it's going to ask you for an authentication. The default password is admin. And the, sorry, the default username is admin. And the password is the same admin. So admin and password admin. Login. And ta-da. Your router is now back to the stock firmware that it came with. Uh, you'll see here it's 1311129. Release whatever. And version 9 router so that's how you return the router back to its native stock firmware after you put ddwrt into it and let's not forget to return our network settings back to what they were so go down to your network icon and then open network and sharing center again change adapter settings uh, right click your enable on your wi-fi and on your local area connection, let's go right click it and choose properties. And what we're going to do here is go to internet uh, protocols. So internet protocol version 4, TCP IP version 4 properties. And just turn this back to obtain IP address automatically and obtain DNS server automatically as well. Then hit OK and OK. And you're back to the way you were before you started this process. That's it for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor, click on the like button right down here. And uh, you know, if you wish to subscribe to my channel, just click on this link up here. And that should subscribe you to the, the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel. Um, okay, again, thank you very much for your time and watching.